Hello and thank you for watching this video. So uh, my name is Bruce Cullen. I am the Director of Products here at Cookdown and today I'm going to take you through uh, one of our ServiceNow products, the AlertSync product. Uh, but before I kind of dive in, uh, so the AlertSync product is, is all about taking those SCOM alerts um, and integrating them into ServiceNow and then choosing to raise incidents to some of them. Then any information uh, that you, you might update in ServiceNow on the incident gets synced back to the alert in SCOM. Um, so really simple products. There's no kind of additional databases or pieces of weird config and it's really, really simple to get set up. And it's all kind of fully documented at support.cookdown.com as well. So let's dive in. So the first thing to say is there's two pieces to the installation. There is a management pack which you import into SCON. Uh, it's imported and installed just like any other management pack. Uh, there's also a ServiceNow app which is installed from the App Store. So once you install the management pack into SCON, you get an additional node at the bottom here, ServiceNow Connector, and then underneath it you have alerts. Uh, once, once you've licensed it, which just requires you uh, buying a key from us and inputting it, um, you get a piece of UI that looks like this. Um, you are, the setup is relatively straightforward. You configure a run as account, um, which uh, essentially is you providing ser uh, SCOM the ServiceNow credentials you want it to connect with and um, setting them to be used by this product. You then provide your ServiceNow instance name and URL. The URL is auto generated from the instance name, but you can overtype it. You then create a connector, what's called a connector. Uh, which is how SCOM decides what alerts to send. Um, I'll come on to that a bit more in a second. Once you've input all of that information, you can test your connection just to make sure everything is good and your connection to ServiceNow is good. And then at the bottom, there's a few additional settings. So you've got a, a master enable disable switch. You've got a timer, which is how frequently uh, should alerts be pushed through into ServiceNow. Um, the default is 120 seconds, but the minimum you can go to is 60 seconds, which makes for a better demo. Uh, you've got bidirectional sync. So if this checkbox is not checked, then SCOM alerts will get pushed through to ServiceNow, um, but any incident data will not get pushed through back into, into SCOM. Uh, bidirectional sync is required for the next one, which is allow alerts to be closed by ServiceNow. So when this one is checked, um, if you uh, close the incident in ServiceNow, or rather resolve the incident in ServiceNow, the SCOM alert is closed. And then you have finally allow resetting monitor alerts. So for monitor alerts, simply closing the alert in SCOM isn't sufficient. You have to reset those monitors too. Um, so checking this uh, will ensure those monitors get reset so that future alerts get triggered rather than it constantly being green. Um, and that's basically all, all there is to it. Um, but before we sort of do a demo, I'm going to show you this, this connector up here. Um, so the connectors are uh, product connectors, internal connectors, just like uh, any other connector in SCOM, it's not sort of custom, weird and wonderful functionality. Uh, you can see when you install the management pack, you get this internal connector here, alert data sync connector. If I go onto the properties of this, um, I've created here a subscription uh, called all alerts. Now when you create the connector, you get given two options. You can create a custom connector, um, which creates uh, a connector without uh, any subscription, or you can uh, pick a, a sync all alerts option, which I picked to create this, which creates a subscription. Looks quite similar, but not exactly the same to this one. I've customized this one slightly. So you give it a display name. You choose the groups that you're going to be forwarding alerts for. I've got them all checked in my management group. You pick the approved targets. So I've uh, selected all of them. You then uh, specify specific criteria uh, to forward alerts based on. So I've got everything here checked apart from the resolution state. I have one uh, resolution state checked only. So only when an alert is put into the create incident state is uh, an alert forwarded on to ServiceNow. So that's that. Um, so now we, we've got all that sort of nailed and set up. The next piece of the puzzle is to go through to ServiceNow. Um, so once you've installed our Alert Sync application from the App Store, you get a few additional options just like this. So you can see here at SCOM Alerts. Um, so when uh, an alert is sent from ServiceNow, it will appear here. Uh, and you can see there's a bunch that we've already got incidents created for. 
Now these incidents aren't always created. Just because it's been sent from SCOM doesn't mean that we necessarily want uh, an incident for it. That would largely depend on your own uh, IT department's process. Uh, the, how I've got this set up is we've got several incident creation rules that govern when an incident is created. And they're prioritized with this processing order field. <clears throat> so if it uh, hits a, this rule, then uh, an incident will get created and will be assigned to the database group and the SQL CI, um, etc. And then we've got a, a lower priority backstop rule, always raise incident, which always raises an incident and assigns it to a NOC triage team. Um, you get the idea. Um, if I drill into one of these, let's say the SQL one, I'll show you what you've got to configure here. So you specify the name, um, you specify the configuration item that you want incidents to be raised against, um, there's also this option here, automatically map CI. If you check this, if you have our discovery product as well, um, we will automatically pick the correct CI for the incident to be raised against. Now, because we created those CIs, we know what's in SCOM and we know what, uh, in, what uh, object the alert was raised against, so we could do that. Um, so don't check that unless you've got our discovery product. You've got the processing order we just talked about and you've got the assignment group. Um, and then finally at the bottom here, you've got the uh, incident creation criteria. This is a standard uh, condition picker type thing, um, like you've probably seen elsewhere in service uh, now. So I've got this set up to uh, uh, create an incident where the monitoring object display name contains SQL. Um, but if I just click on this drop down, you'll see that what I've got available to me is all of the alert properties that we pull through. <clears throat> You get the idea. All right, so um, I'm going to push through an alert from uh, SCOM and show you that working. So if I go to whoops, monitoring and active alerts, I'm going to pick one of these new critical alerts here. And based on my connector settings I showed you earlier, an alert only gets sent from SCOM when it goes into the create incident state. So this is the kind of use case where you have uh, the SCOM team doing an initial level triage of your alert um, and pick which of these uh, alerts is kind of real and actually needs action. Um, we would kind of recommend against this. We recommend using our EasyTune product so that SCOM only generates alerts for sensible uh, things and then forwarding all of those things onto ServiceNow to create incidents from. <clears throat> but this is another use case. So I've got this set up here to show you. So by now, click Create Incident. Um, and we'll go back to service now. This takes around 60 seconds, so I'm going to leave this window open. And while this is doing its thing in the background, in true kind of demo style, here's one I made earlier. So this is an incident that was created from alert. I'm going to tell you about the data that uh, gets pulled through and, and what I've done uh, on top of that. So the caller gets set to the service account, uh, which you configure when you set up the service now app. Again, all the documentation for this is on support.cookdown.com. Um, so the caller gets set to alert sync service here. Um, the I set after creation, the business service, uh, to be the sales app. The configuration item was automatically uh, populated by the incident creation rule, as was the assignment group. And I manually assigned it to myself afterwards. Um, so the results is obviously the incident itself in service now, but because I've got bidirectional sync enabled, uh, these additional pieces of data are pushed through to SCOM. So if I go back to my alerts in SCOM, um, uh, number 24, there we go. So you can see the ticket ID field in SCOM we populate with the incident ID. The owner gets set to the uh, uh, assigned to in service now. Uh, we've used these SCOM custom fields for the additional data. So one word of caution here, if you enable bidirectional sync, uh, make sure that, that you're not using these fields for anything else. Um, though there are kind of alternatives if you are, and I'll talk about those in just a second. This is the default behavior of the product that I'm describing here. <clears throat> so we've got the owner, we've got the assignment team, assignment group, sorry, the business service, the CI and the service now incident states pull through into SCOM. So if I now refresh this, 
what I hopefully will see if I've left it long enough is that the uh, the uh, alert that I had moved into create incident state should uh, now be pushed through into service now. I'm just going to go to to service now to the SCOM alerts table and refresh this and see what's happening here. Okay, so if I refresh, yep, there you go. You can see that this is the one. Uh, cluster role has exceeded its failover threshold. There it is in uh, in service now. You can see it's had an incident race against it. If I now refresh SCOM, this sometimes take, takes a while for the sync in the other direction to work. What we should see is uh, that, oh, there we go, it sweet me to it. The uh, incident uh, ticket ID field being filled in along with the custom fields that are populated by default. So this one's hit the uh, failover kind of rule uh, rather than the, the the uh, SQL one or the IS one that I had set up. So it's been assigned to the NOC triage team. Um, so you can see that that's working. Uh, if I go into my incident now, um, so this is literally what was set. So uh, not the business service and not the assigned to field. So I'm going to assign this one to myself. Um, Bruce, you can go have a look at this. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to say that this uh, incident is part of the sales app um, business service. And I'm going to update this ticket. <clears throat> and then we're going to wait a bit more time. And what we should see is that these additional fields, so owner and custom field two, which is our business service uh, field, are populated with data. This is the bi-directional sync stuff working. Going to give this a moment and then hit refresh. Might take a moment. So it's not coming through right now, but what I'll do while that's coming through is I'll just go to the alert itself. I'll show you something in here. So on all of the alert records in service now, uh, you can see all of the fields that we keep, uh, you know, push through and keep in sync. Um, so the, the the ones that you see right here are properties of the attributes of the alert itself. Um, we have information relating to uh, incidents. Um, you can see monitored object attributes. So these are also properties of the alert themselves, but they're relating to the monitored object as opposed to the alert itself. <coughs> and this is all uh, pulled through. Uh, right, cool, that's been enough time. So going back through to SCOM, you can see it's pushed through the owner and you can see it's pushed through the business service into those custom fields. That's great. So there's one other thing to show you. So everything I've been showing you in terms of the fields and the data that's synced and the behavior is, is the default. Um, if I go through to the incident creation rules, incident creation rules, there they are. There was one additional tab that I didn't click on earlier um, for create and one for update. And that allows you to basically do whatever you want. So if the simple uh, condition property builder isn't sufficient for you, um, there's an advanced creation and advanced updates checkbox here. Once checked, you get a script. So this is just JavaScript, basically. Um, so you can see we've given you an example here. This is more or less the default behavior in script form. If you don't like this, let's say you want the description, um, you know, to be pushed through to a different field in ServiceNow, you could just modify this script and, and change this. Um, equally for the updates behavior, checkbox, there are two uh, scripts here. There's the alert update script and the incident update script. Um, same kind of idea. If you don't like the default behavior, you would just go and modify these. Um, these default scripts are uh, example scripts rather, sorry, are available on support.cookdown.com if you want to get an idea of uh, uh, what these do and how you might go about editing them. It's all fully documented. All right. So that's everything I had to show you today on our Alert Sync product. It's really, really simple and it just works, which is part of its strength. Uh, if you have any questions that we haven't answered, uh, give us a shout, hello at cookdown.com uh, or on our website, if you go to the Alert Sync area, there's a contact us form and uh, I'll book a meeting with you and we'll, we'll chat. Um, or you can always go at team underscore cookdown on Twitter. Uh, it's another way to reach chat to us. Um, that's everything I had to show you, so thank you very much. Until next time, cheers.